Well, you know, sometimes, some days, you just you wake up in the morning and you you feel something. Yes. Did there you know are that? Times, yes. You you're happy today. <laughs> Look at you. Well, yeah. I mean, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. Mm -hmm. You were out. You were traveling. Some might say gallivanting. There was some of that. There was a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good, though. You need to get out there every so often. Yeah, once in a while. But we needed you back. Yes. We. It's uh, Al Pacino. I try to get out. They pulled me back in. Uh, we pulled you back in. Yes. He tries to get out of the mob. Yep. Not saying this is the mob. Not saying it's all that different. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> He tries to get out. We pulled him. But while they're responsible, the audience is responsible too because they pulled, they were pulling. We yeah. put Kirk in his seat. We put Jack in his seat. They started pulling. They said, Who is this man? Get rid of this. We need Willie Do. No, I, I It was like the background. The yeah. You know. I don't Will, know if they saw Willie the background Do yet. There's a, there's a Will, yeah, there's a Willie Do background. There's a campaign going on for so, presidency. So that's what happened, man. In the comments, you were gone. And, and I encouraged Kirk to sit there. I encouraged Jack to sit there. But the type of. The, the beating they took in the comment section. I thought it was a good time. I listened to them. So did I. You know? So did I. But then the people in the comments, will it do? Yeah. Will it do? Mm. Will it do? And you're not surprised. <laughs> I appreciate the support. Like mm -hmm. I said, thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, a lot of stuff has happened since you've been gone, and it's time to get caught up. It's time to get filled in. Are we? Uh, are you Philip the French? See, now? there you go. All right, you picked up on it. Yeah, it took me. Report: a New 4.7 inch iPhone launching in March. The little iPhone, the cheap iPhone, the iPhone for everyone. As far as Tim Cook is concerned, of course, this thing's been rumored for a while. What's it going to be called? What are they going to do with it? Is it? It's the old one, but it's the new one, but it's the one that everybody wants because they don't want to spend a thousand dollars. At least some people. That's the premise here. Touch ID makes a comeback. You're unlocking with your fingerprint a novel idea in 2015. Mm -hmm. But it's coming back because some people still want it. And I guess uh, from a cost-effectiveness perspective for a budget phone, it should be fine for a lot of people. Bloomberg, Bloomberg, Bloomberg. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know which publication it was. They're competing <laughs> pu publications. Yeah. Bloomborg sounds really interesting, though. By uh, Detroit Borg? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like Bloomberg, but it's only reporting on robotics <laughs> and really fringe futuristic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> it is a sister site to Bloomberg. Bloomborg. Think about it. See what I'm saying here? Uh, but this was Bloomberg, unfortunately. They reported that Apple's suppliers are gearing up to begin mass production of a new 4.7-inch iPhone. This work is going to be split between Honhai Precision Industry, Pegatron Corp., and Wistron Corp. Those are the type of companies you do business with when you're in the billions, Will. <laughs> the corps? Yeah, they all got corps, and they all got names like Pegatron and Wistron. Yeah. All the Trons is what you get for your billions of dollars. The 4.7-inch touchscreen will employ Touch ID built into the home button. These are all rumors, but... It seems pretty evident at this point. A lot of things pointing in this direction. And this will, of course, be an alternative to using Apple's facial recognition stuff, the Face ID stuff that we've been dealing with since the iPhone 10. Mm -hmm. Can I just say something, Will? Quick little side note. I've been using an iPhone, iPhone uh, Pro Max 11 Pro Max. Still don't feel comfortable saying all of that together. One day I'll be comfortable. Battery life has been incredible. Apple, I got to give them a pat on the back. Yeah? What are you getting there? I don't know. I never... Uh, some nights I didn't even charge it over the past few days. Oh. I just charge in the car a little bit here and there. I mean, I haven't looked at the screen on time or anything like that, but just anecdotally speaking, I have to say, having switched from the Pixel 4 XL to this in the past week or so, I was amazed at the battery life on this thing i'm just way less tethered hmm. and it means that anyway that's not what this show is about it just a little side note to put in there oh. people want to know the people want to hear a few words every so often all right will get it straight 
So you're getting paid by Tim Cook too? Yeah, exactly. Okay. People need to hear some words every so often. Yeah. Words are good. Every so often. Yeah. You only you only words twenty four seven. No. It's just noise at that point. Mmm. And it becomes static. Mm. We're having a time today, Will. <laughs> Lovely. So this thing's going to be a lot like the previous generation uh, iPhone 8. Apparently taking a lot of, who knows, it probably recycled a lot of recycled parts from the iPhone 8. Not that there's anything wrong with that. A lot of people like the iPhone 8, use the iPhone 8, are still hanging on to the iPhone 8. So if you can offer people a budget option, they can use all their favorite iOS apps and Apple-specific stuff like iMessage and so forth in 2020 for a budget price. I'm all for it. Now, what is the price going to be? There's a rumor it'll be around $399. Could be less. Of course, it could battle with other budget devices like the A-series stuff from Google with the Pixel. I think it's going to be popular anyways because I think there is... Well, we know for a fact there's a lot of people holding on to their old iPhones mm -hmm. just because the new upgrade price is bananas to mm -hmm. get a flagship level. And so maybe they're sitting there on an iPhone 7, let's say, waiting. You even see people on a 6S. Mm. That's a thing. Mm -hmm. People are using a 6S. And so now maybe with this lower price point option, you're going to get some people upgrading. And presumably, you're going to get a quicker phone. And yeah, it won't be the screen-to-body ratio of 2020. And I'm not going to make the argument it's going to be your best value because you're going to probably be able to get some better specs. But if you need to be inside of that iOS ecosystem, as some people do, now in March, you're going to have a better entry point from a cost perspective. 4.7 inch. Plus, some people might just want a small phone because no phones are small anymore. Right. The, the budget iPhone 11, plain 11, is still a big phone. In fact, it's bigger than the non-Max Pro. Hmm. You know, I've handled these phones, Will. I've touched them. Yeah. I'm aware. Phones are big in 2020. We got some OnePlus news. This one's really exciting to me as a person because I'm a guy in the world, much like you. Mm. And every so often, I use a little wireless charging. Every so often, I like to have the option. It's in my truck. It's beside the bed. Every so often, I like to have the option. And one of the drawbacks for me with the OnePlus devices has been that they've been so reluctant to put the wireless charging in. I even spoke to the CEO about it. You see how the yeah. tone changed that? I even spoke to the CEO about it. Is there a reason why? It's I spoke to Pete Lau about it. Yeah. President and founder. Mm -hmm. You were there. Yeah. Um, Carl Pay as well. Yeah, Carl's there. Yeah. I said, come on, let's just do the wireless charging for what it would take. We put the little, few tiny little components in there. But I tend to think there's been good reason why. Actually, let me just give you the headline first. OnePlus 8 Pro could be the brand's first phone to support wireless charging. Okay, great. Got that out of the way. And then we have some evidence on here that might lead you towards that speculation. In the past, I kind of get where they're coming from. They say, no, they had something back then. I believe it was called Dash Charge. They changed the name because there was some sort of issue, but they had one of the fastest charging phones at the time and continue to be one of the big players in fast charging. The, all those McLaren versions have increased charge speeds. And it's not just OnePlus. You have others like Oppo. and uh, We've seen the competitions going on currently and i think the fear is that if you advertise this wireless charging and you make it a big deal and you put it in your device and you talk about it you might discourage people from utilizing what you probably conceive as your better technology mm -hmm. perceive as your better technology now they didn't say that specifically i mean he said it in some similar words that he believed wireless charging was inferior i just like the versatility i like the option for example, Will, I'll tell you right now. In my truck, there's a slot, which is wireless charging. Then beside it, there's a power brick, like an option to put in power, uh, a typical household adapter. I have an adapter, a household adapter, plugged in there permanently, and I have the wireless charging section. If I'm having a casual day and I got a few battery numbers, 
going and the battery's looking all right, I'll just drop it on the wireless section. Just say, nope, just drop it down. I'm driving. I'm off. Got the Bluetooth. It's all sorted out. But if I'm in a pinch and I know I got a short trip and I'm, I'm on the last legs of the battery, then I'll plug into the fast charger, which is in the household outlet of the truck. So this is kind of one of those weird scenarios in which here you're living with both options staring you square in the face and you still, dependent on circumstance, choose one over the other, whichever is more convenient for that moment. Now, people are saying, Lou, you're crazy bananas. What's wrong with you? You can't plug the thing in? You're saying sometimes you're too lazy to plug. I'm not saying, what I'm saying is there's a convenience, there is a slight convenience factor with the wireless that sometimes if you have both options in front of you, you will gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. So I've been waiting for a OnePlus device that supports it. I've been talking, you know, I've been talking about wireless mm -hmm. charging since 1987. Yeah. It's been a while. I'm 53 years old. <laughs> People don't know. People don't know these things. What are the beards? The beard showing. Yeah, actually, I was seeing a thing. I was actually seeing a thing on my Google News feed about how uh, they figured out the reason that stress turns your hair color. Mm. So, take a look at that beard right there. Stressed out. Mm. No, it is not. It, actually, the findings are. It's not. <laughs> it's not necessarily stress. Uh, maybe you're just having a good time. Yeah. You know, but you got a lot to look forward to in that beard of yours there, Will. Mm -hmm. I'll tell That's you what. Luscious. Yeah, you got a lot to look forward to, my friend. Yeah. Anyway, so here's the rumor. OnePlus may finally launch its first phone with wireless charging built in later this year. A tweet posted by tipster Max J. We got tipster. We got new tipsters hmm. popping up out of the woodwork, just tipping things off. He suggests the upcoming iPhone or OnePlus 8 Pro will include support for wireless charging. There's an image and it says charge like a pro and it looks like the upcoming OnePlus device with the animation and it's sitting on top of a wireless charger. Now, granted, it's important to note that Pete Lau, the CEO, as I mentioned earlier, uh, he did an interview with, or he went on the Verge cast recently and he seemed to indicate no chance. He said... He finds wireless charging to be too slow and that it's just not worth it compared to fast charging provided by warp charge. Okay, it's warp charge. I think it used to be dash charge. I don't know. Change the names. <clears throat> but then again, maybe he's just uh, maybe the wireless charging of the past. You know, maybe it's more capable on this next version or uh, maybe he changed his mind since the Verge has I don't, I don't know. Who knows? You have the leak, then you have this. All I have to say is OnePlus, if you're listening, Particularly in 2020, it's becoming so important to compete on every feature possible. That's how competitive it is right now. Just throw in the wireless charging, call it a day. Yeah. Just put it in there, call have it a day. Have some options. Just call it a day. That's my advice. If anybody cares. I mean, you don't have to take my advice. You could keep going with the warp charge. And, I, and like I said, I've been in that situation. I use both. So I'm the example. I use both depending on the circumstance. Uh, speaking of upcoming smartphones, we have the highest and tutu score ever posted from a leaked Realme Snapdragon 865 device. Are you laughing at and tutu, my friend? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's a, a memorable name. No, it's a fun one. To say that. It's a fun name, most least. definitely. Uh, yeah. I'm not huge into the benchmarking thing just because it's obviously it's not real world. It's not how real people are using things. They do serve certain a certain purpose, but then there was also the news of manufacturers gaming or tuning just for performance on the synthetic benchmark. So whatever. Regardless, it's interesting because it, it does give us some type of glimpse into these upcoming chips into this future, this Snapdragon 865 future. And we can actually discern uh, because of these results uh, which version, which variant of the Snapdragon 865 was responsible for this record-breaking Antutu. I mean, how else can you say it? If it's not Antutu, then what is it? On. On Tutu. On Tutu. 
So there, that's 2-2? Two, 2-2. Two. And 2-2. Two, two. And 2-2. Two, two. And 2-2. Two, two. Anyway. It was the Qualcomm SM8250, which is the 5G variant. Snapdragon 865 5G mobile platform. And it was tested on an upcoming device, Realme RMX2071. And the score, 574,985 points. That breezes past the previous high score of 560,217, which was posted by the upcoming Xiaomi Mi 10. So we're obviously going to see this 865 equipment popping up in everything very soon. Mm -hmm. And we would expect to see this degree we would expect to see some form of improvement in order to justify the upgrade for individuals. Uh, the Whether or not all 865s will perform like this remains to be seen because the 865 chip that was in the Mi 10 obviously didn't score as well as the 5G version inside of this Realme device, this upcoming Realme device. So, and then, and then you bring into question, they're mentioning here the ROG phone. They actually went in there and did their own tweaks mm. to increase performance on previous versions. So if they could get their hands on something like this, they could po possibly push it even further. Uh, but nonetheless, look, it's an A65 future we're living in, regardless of which device you choose to get it in, whether it's those upcoming Samsungs, whether it's a Realme device. We, ha we do have some degree of parity across the board, so long as manufacturers have access to that latest stuff. And... In case you were wondering how much better it would be here, we have some degree of evidence of how much better it can be. And of course, it comes alongside that 5G improvement, although I'm not so so sure how important that is to buyers right now, hmm. that piece. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you feel about your mobile connect? You need more speed? What are you up to? Well, my speed is actually really slow because of my carrier. I don't know if it's- So you, you couldn't even take advantage? No, yeah, you know. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a while still. But what about your 855 performance in general? Do you ever feel this is lagging right now? No, it's been solid, right? To be honest, yeah. And I mean, it's Android, Google. You know, it's it's fine. Um, Android by Google. Yeah, Android by Google. By it, El it, by it Alphabet. Yeah. Right. And they made the Pixel. Did you ever have the serial alphabets? Have you ever tried that? Uh, it recently yeah. came back to store shelves. Oh, really? Easy. Kirk just got all fired up. Yeah, I used to love that as a kid. Give people a, a quick glimpse. Uh, this cereal was actually the inspiration for the new name of Google's parent company, Alphabet. So that's where they got the idea from, as you can tell. I don't know. It's a new recipe, I should say. It's, on, it's back on store shelves with a new recipe. New and improved taste is what they say, Kirk. <laughs> Might have been a wizard. A wizard would be a good idea to put on a kid's cereal, probably. Yeah. But also, you learn your alphabet. So, uh, that's a pretty dynamic experience. You're chomping, you're learning. That's a young Willie do right there. Mm -hmm. Chomping and learning. How about this? It's something called the ultrasonic gripper. And I know you're going to look at that, Will. And you're going to say to yourself, what am I looking at? You're going to say to yourself, why is Lou putting this in front of me? Now, without scrolling any further, I want you to tell me what that thing does there, Will. Let's robots move things without touching them. You're That's just, the title. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, you can't just read the title. But Will. looking at the, the image, it's very confusing. Those I know. two don't match. Mm, 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 mm. It's like two half domes. Mm. And then it's like, there's something in the middle of it. Mm. In between. Like water or something. Using ultrasonic pulses, it's able to concentrate the forces <laughs> and be able to centralize the object in front of the domes. Willie Einstein. Right? Willie Einstein. Uh, I nominate Willie Einstein. That's a water droplet, right? So... Is that right? It is using ultrasonic sound to create pressure. On the inside of this cavity, yeah. for those of you that are just listening to this, I've got these two things that look like bowls. 
they look like cereal bowls, actually, probably mm -hmm. for some alphabets later on. They're like an inch away from each other? They're like an inch away from each other, and, they, and they're facing one another. At least the cavity of each bowl is facing one another. There is, they are able through ultrasonic sound to create a pressure, a pressurized zone in there. Th that pressure is strong enough, capable enough to actually hold a small object in the center of this contraption without anything physically touching it. The pressure itself. Now, the reason this is important is because sometimes, and, and, and for the record, you need to scroll down a little bit because you're sitting there thinking, what is that thing even holding up? If you head to the video, there's a video there, Magic Robot Hand, and if you scroll forward a little bit, you'll see that this little robot is holding up these almost microscopic tiny little elements for a person working with incredible precision that would normally have nowhere to put that thing. Look how small that little fragment is. Mm. So we're talking about jewelers and watchmakers. Some other examples they gave us here. What do we got? Ultrasonic gripper customers could include watchmakers where existing grippers can damage the thin film of lubricant on small components. Microchips seem like another potential use. So anything you can't really touch or manipulate or if you used a physical thing to grip it, you might damage it. Hmm. So you can imagine the potential precision applications for this. It's amazing. You just put it there. You know what's held there. You ever worked on something tiny? like opened up an iPhone or something, you put these little screws in, mm -hmm. oh my goodness gracious. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about objects potentially even tinier than the tiniest iPhone mm -hmm. screw. Mm -hmm. You need to reliably put somewhere and then move it around. And that's how this grip works. Kind of an unusual uh, implementation of a robotic gripper or ro robot hand. You, you hear that and you think of something grabbing something large and like moving it or manipulating it. But this is some strange combination using ultrasonic sound. You never would have expected it, Will. In fact, if you look, if you look at those little black dots on the inside, you can see the speaker, the kind of speaker modules in there. And yeah, right in there. It's kind of crazy what mm -hmm. you can do with sound. Mm -hmm. You could probably, with enough of this, we could probably lift you up in the center of the studio. Yeah. Levitation, Willie Do. Just meditating. That's interesting. Why doesn't that That's work? I guess you just had to be in some sort of contraption like that, life size. Uh, here's to the next invention, I guess. Mm -hmm. Levitating do. Very cool. Here's why the Coke at McDonald's is so good. I mean, I didn't even know it was. Apparently, it tastes better. Do you agree with this? Oh, Kirk knows this. I, I honestly did not know this. So, Kirk knows this. Did you know this? No, I never tasted in a long time at McDonald's. And so apparently they have a very special way that their Coke has to be treated and they're a big time customer for Coca-Cola, you can imagine. So they get to call certain shots that other players can't call. And so according to, where is this from? Microsoft News, in fact. Most Coke syrup is shipped to restaurants in plastic bags. I did not know this. But for McDonald's, Coca-Cola sends the product in stainless steel drums. They demand that it comes in stainless steel drums so as to not influence or degrade the flavor. Mm. Apparently, that material is better at preserving those ingredients so they're fresh when they arrive at their destination. Second reason that Coke tastes different at McDonald's apparently has to do with temperature because they do not store the water for the soda inside of the soda fountain. Apparently, that's what most restaurants do. They do not do that. Instead, they have insulated tubes that transport water that's already cold straight from the fridge directly to the dispenser when it's ready, so it's ready to be poured. So the difference here, I suppose, if you have the water stored inside the fountain machine, it's only the ice that makes it cold. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the rate of melting of the ice is going to be different if the water used to make the soda isn't cold to begin with. You follow me? Because apparently McDonald's also has a very specific formulation of ice to Coke ratio mm. that has to melt. So the concentration of syrup to water 
is meant to be optimal actually after it's given a little bit of time for some of the ice to melt. Hmm. So you're getting a slightly higher concentration pre-melt. They take, a, I mean, there's so much consideration that goes into it. So it's only Coke? There's no other fountain drinks that do this? I would assume that the other Coke products inside of the fountain, because they're exclusive to Coke, right? Mm -hmm. At McDonald's. So Coke would come alongside with whatever else is under the Coke brand. I see. Which I don't know, Sprite, Minute Maid, whatever. All the, all the other various ones would probably follow a similar protocol. I don't know about the steel container shipping, but probably a singular fountain machine that pulls water from that's already been refrigerated. That would make sense to me for all those drinks. Now, McDonald's knows that Coke will eventually get watered down in a cup filled with ice, so it's tweaked its syrup to water ratio to account for this. They claim the best sip of Coke may come after your ice has had a few minutes to melt. That's your best sip of Coke, so you got to give it a second. Wow. Also, and I didn't think about this, but I guess I, I recognize it now, their, uh, their straw is slightly wider than what you're used to. That yellow straw is slightly wider so that when you take that first sip, it hits more of the tongue. Hmm. So anyway, they figured out a few different things. Honestly, I didn't notice it, but I found this to be interesting. When you get to that level of success, you start calling those shots. It's amazing the, the intricacies that go into it. Who's monitoring it? It's all... Uh, comes down to a science. Really. It's a science. And they're not messing around. And they want you to have a nice Coke so you come back for another Coke. Mm. So I don't know. I feel like I need to try it. I don't know. I feel like I need to see if it's yeah. true or not. It could It could be regional too. It could, it could switch from region to region. There's a, a cool thing at the bottom of the article here. Not everything McDonald's puts out has been well received. Some of the biggest failures from the company's history include the Mick DLT, the Arch Deluxe, and broccoli-flavored bubblegum. The only thing I remember out of that bunch was the Arch Deluxe. That rings a bell, but I honestly don't remember what it looked like. And the fact that they did broccoli bubblegum is also very strange. The Arch Deluxe. What was special about it? Oh, it had some type of sauce on it. Something going on there. Will's on the case. He needs to get to the bottom of it. Or the top of it. Sweet slivered Spanish onions, fresh, crisp iceberg lettuce, buttery homestyle bakery bun, a new secret sauce for grown-ups made of mustards and mayonnaise. Hmm. So it's got to do with the special sauce for sure. Of course, you got the juicy quarter-pound patty, 100% pure domestic beef cooked to perfection, as you would say if you were McDonald's. Yeah. Obviously. This sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're going for an Arch Deluxe after this. You're going to track one down. And you're going to wash it down with some bubble gum flavored broccoli. Ugh. As you would if you were Willie Do. I didn't know that was a thing either. Anyway. There you have it, Will. We're back. We're back in a big way. And you know, this is a, we got some new people that watched this episode. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully we got some new people in the universe that decided to spend their time with us. And they, they're just hanging out. And we're hanging out. And they're hanging out with us. Mm -hmm. And I have to say... I'm appreciative of that. It's a cozy place here. Words were shared mm -hmm. in the air. Yes. Now they're out there. <laughs>